So with respect to the health space, you know, I think we have to recognize it's been bad. It's been bad for a long time. Misinformation is not new. It's been bad for a long time. And in analyzing misinformation, context matters, okay? Yeah, misinformation has been around since we were able to communicate, as soon as we started talking to each other. But, but now we can go back, let's just go back a couple decades and get a sense of the context where misinformation emerged. So think about in the 60s, right? Most of the health misinformation kind of emanated from, the new, from a new agey vibe, right? It was counterculture. It was, kind of, it was kind of on the left. And yes, that is Woodstock, people. I'm going to come back to this. Let's go forward. Let's go forward with just a couple decades. We get to the 80s, right? And we start to see health misinformation kind of become normalized. By the way, I rocked those leg warmers. I really did. We, it's starting to get a little bit more center stage, right? It's becoming commercialized. It's becoming part of our daily life, normalized, right? Okay, let's go forward about, about a decade, and we got this guy, right? One of my nemesis, by the way, Dr. Oz. And he really is an important part of our story because he really did. And by the way, there are other figures like him, but I think he was center stage for sure. Um, he helped to normalize, to create this tolerance for pseudoscience. He brought misinformation to middle America, right? Okay, let's go forward about a decade, and we've got this person, Gwyneth Paltrow, and a giant vagina, right? Now, Gwyneth is also an important part of the, our misinformation story. By the way, there's empirical evidence to back this up, and there were other celebrities like Gwyneth, but she is symbolic of what started to happen, where, again, this, there's this normalization, this acceptance of pseudoscience, right? And Gwyneth, you know, was this celebrity wellness brand, her celebrity wellness brand, Goop, was a big part of that story. But the other reason Gwyneth is interesting is we start to see the pushback, right? We start to see the pushback to misinformation. We start to see the polarization that has defined our public discourse today. Now, how many people here have never heard of the jade vagina eggs. Never heard of them, be honest. Okay, this is a very sophisticated audience. <laughs> She's heard of them. <laughs> um, so the jade vagina, where's my sponsors? Look, right before the pandemic, I gave a talk at Baylor Medical College, and they gave me jade vagina eggs as a speaker gift. I didn't know where to put them. I put them on my, on my they're on my shelf at home, okay? But, but this, like, so she starts selling jade vagina eggs, and they do exactly what you think. They do nothing, right? They're supposed to align your life force energy. And she loses this, uh, this lawsuit. Now, $145,000 is not a lot of money to Goop or to Gwyneth. But we start to see this kind of regulatory response and also a response from the scientific community. Okay, let's leave Gwyneth's vagina and go to Tucker's testicles. Okay. <laughs> Does everyone know Tucker Carlson in this room? So Tucker, you know, an extreme, you know, a right-wing uh, social commentator, he thinks that men, he, so it, it, that he, well, he's really into wellness now, I don't know if you knew this, but he thinks that men should irradiate their testicles. By the way, I did this <laughs> in Vancouver about three weeks ago. It's for a documentary I'm working on. Fear not, it's PG. <laughs> but uh, he thinks that men should be irradiating their testicles for the purpose of boosting our, our testosterone because he thinks there's a global conspiracy to make us less manly. Have you heard about this? So we, we're more compliant, right? So think about that journey from Woodstock to Tucker's testicles, okay? <laughs> I'm going to come back to that. But of course, all of this is absurd, right? It's absurd, and it's easy to laugh at it, but we also know that it does real harm, right? Misinformation does real harm. It does harm in the health space, as we see you know, the rise of vaccination hesitancy and the rise of diseases like measles. It does real harm uh, in, in very tangible and measurable ways.